935. Hello, it is Mike Matthews broadcasting from Cafe Anyway, located somewhere in Podcastro Valley. Today, the finale of my Into an Interview with Adam Burnett of the excellent San Francisco band Danger Maker. We hear another final great tune from them. Plus, we hear from Shelly Shuhart, Floyd the Floorman, and John Deere the Engineer. Mike's Daily Podcast. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're in uh, Podcastro Valley. Ten. To be more clear, Mike's Daily Podcast. Fall is flying in, and the moon is big and bright today in China. It's a holiday that celebrates lunar light. I know this because my roommate is from that land that takes a lot of time to fly to, and I can't sleep when I'm on a flight. I'm tall, so somebody's always bumping into me or trying to give me nuts. Mike's Daily Podcast. Doctor Who last night was the conclusion of a two-parter and dialects don't have butts. Mike's a lot of them died Daily on last night's show. Podcast. I didn't like part one. Yeah. But part two is a little bit better. The doctor seems to have regressed lately. Last season he was so cocksure. Now he's more unsure. I like the insecure doctor. I like him this season. It'll be neat to see where this goes. Is that a TARDIS in the sky? Nope, just a huge man in the moon, grinning ear to ear. So bright. Check it out tonight. If you're listening to the show on Sunday, check it out. Eh, it might be bright the next couple of days when you finally get around to listening to this. Let me know when you listen to this. Email me, mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. You can also comment there on Twitter at Mike Talks or on my Facebook, facebook.com slash mikesdailypodcast. I'm also at Mike Talks on Facebook as well. Um, gosh, I'm looking outside right now, looking out through a window here at Cafe Anyway, and the sky is so beautiful, the clouds. I don't see a TARDIS up there either. But it's just, it's just a beautiful day. And it, it, makes, it brings to mind the wonders of this world and the, and the things that we didn't know about. Like, did you know about Harry Truman? The uh, president that was the one that ordered the dropping of the atom bomb in Japan, Nagasaki, Hiroshima. He had an interesting thing later in his life. He would sit in this reading room. There he was, this famous, famous historical figure. And he would sit in this tiny little reading room in his house with a tiny little light on, one of those little lamps, the rest of the room dark, and he'd have this tiny little desk lamp on. And in these, uh, he was in a nice, he was in a very nice, comfortable chair. Off to the side was his wife and his daughter, and they would sit in these more uh, uncomfortable chairs. Just a little bit of wood, a little bit of padding, hardly anything, him in a nice plush chair. And occasionally, and everybody would be reading with their little lamps. And uh, occasionally the daughter and the mother would begin to fight and get into an argument over something. And Harry would read his book, and he would get to the bottom of the page, and he would put his finger right there at the bottom of the page, and he would stop. And if the fight had escalated too far, he would get up and leave the room. This story relayed via C-SPAN 3 by the uh, grandson of Harry Truman. Hilarious story. He was giving a tour of their old house. It's just interesting to, you know, all these humans, these, these historic monumental figures. So human. So human. Look, he just walked in. Hello, Mike Matthews. It's Jolene Stewart's gift shop supervisor. Oh my god, that was beautiful what you just said. Thank you. Um, Mike, do you get strange callers that call you at that radio station you work part-time at? Uh, well, let me see. You're, 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 you're hoping that you win tomorrow? Yeah. What do you want to win tomorrow? I want to win a thousand, thousand dollars. What would you do with a thousand dollars? I'll buy me a new phone and I'll buy a new kitty. You'd buy a new phone and buy a new kitty? I'll buy a new phone. And I buy new food. And food's gonna cost you a thousand dollars? No, I don't. I buy a phone too, and then and then I'm I'm buying food out of it. Yeah, maybe you could buy a restaurant. I know, right? That'd be yeah. nice. What would yeah. your What would your restaurant be? What theme would your restaurant be? 
Mine's probably going to be like a fried chicken place. Are you going to buy a KFC? Yeah. What's your yeah. favorite song? My favorite song? Yeah. My favorite song is is um, R. Kelly. R. Kelly, I believe I'm fine. Oh, uh, do you like Taylor Swift? Yes. Do you like Europe? I love like Europe, yeah. Final countdown. It's yeah. the final countdown. Yep, I like that. It's awesome. Uh, My is, that guy has great taste in music because Europe is a great band. That's true, Shelly. They certainly are. Look who else just walked in. Oh, Mike, this is Floyd the Floorman! And this is John Deere, the engineer. Mike, it's great to be here and talking about the moon with you. The wonderful moon. It's so beautiful. Yeah. I can't believe. What the hell is this place anyway? Mike, who is that person? I don't know, just some uh, irate guy. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's a Doctor Who. It should be interesting where that goes. I am an odd fish because it's like the only thing I watch. I watch that and a bunch of uh, Miss Fisher's mysteries. Yes, isn't that a great show from Australia? I just love the way they talk in an Australian accent and throughout the entire show. I, wait, my Australian accent's getting a little bit diffused. They, yeah, uh, yeah. Mike, are you okay? I'm trying to go Australia, mate. Oh, okay. There, I think I did it a little bit, right? You gotta kind of, qu- you, when you're saying a sentence, you gotta speed it up in the middle and slow down towards the end. That didn't sound Australian at all. What do you know? I know, I'm an engineer. I know a lot of things. Oh. Mike, we still want to get that picture of John Deere, the engineer, and I in a loving embrace. It was a beautiful depiction of us. All right, Floyd, uh, I'll try and wrestle that from Haley and his or her girlfriend. So confusing. But uh, one thing's for sure, Caitlyn Jenner's for sure a woman. Everything is written down. Everything is legal. So that's all great. Yes. Mike Matthews, that's like so wonderful. Let's celebrate by going to see that awful Transylvania movie. Yes, at the Transyl Hotel. It was the Transylvania 5500. What was the name of that movie? Anyway, the second Transylvania, Hotel Transylvania. That's it. Anyway, for some reason, it is the biggest opening of a movie in September ever. Ever. In the history of movies. That movie. Does that blow your mind or what? Uh, the, the guys that made that movie are probably sitting around going, What? We did? Really? That's kind of sad. At any rate. What's also kind of sad is I'm, I'm watching here. We have a television. We have a flat screen here hanging at the cafe anyway. Okay, we used to have a flat screen hanging here at cafe anyway. And on it is the Travel Channel. And there's a, 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 a thing, a program about hamburgers and hamburger joints. And one of the hamburger joints they just showed was this one in Connecticut that serves steamed hamburgers. Steamed. Everybody in the restaurant that, they're, that they showed on the show is A, male, B, white, and C, fat. Which is exactly the three descriptions of the guy I used to do a morning show for in Connecticut. And he apparently, he told me once, because I brought it up with him one time, this show I was watching, because that's it's a repeat. There's nothing on the Travel Channel that's brand new. It's all repeated like 5,000 times. And I told him about it, and he goes, Oh yeah, Mike, I used to live above that, that hamburger ship. Mike, was he Australian? That is not an Australian accent. That, for some reason, is a Connecticut accent. They sound like they're from Minnesota. Anyways, so Chicago. I don't know. Some accent over there. I don't know my accents. And he said, yeah, I used to live above there and eat there all the time. Not a good idea if you want to, like, not get diabetes. It's just sort of a thing. Delicious. It may, it looks like they. What they do is they steam the hamburger. They steam the cheese. A huge block of cheese. Smack it together. You eat it, and you basically get back problems at the age of 30. Which, hey, I speak from experience. I got really fat. Being in radio, you sit around a lot. 
you listen to music, it's a hard life. <laughs> well, you basically don't make any money doing it. That's the hard part of it. And you end up doing uh, radio stations like I did for that guy in Connecticut for free. From my house in California. But he and you did it for free and he expected me to do all this stuff for free. Do a bunch of commercials for me for free. I'm like, no. And he said, well... And then, yeah, you that's radio. You get fat. And then I was really fat in my 30s. Had horrible back problems. Stopped eating the hamburgers. I basically only eat turkey burgers now. I try to eat a lot of vegetables and fruits. Back problems went away. Oh, and you walk. when You, you walk every day and then stretch after your walk. Back problems go away. It's wonderful. Love it. I also love the website, mikesdailypodcast.com, where you can go there and check out the daily blog, the podcast picture, all my past interviews. And if you want to help us out, we are on uh, 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 mikesdailypodcast.com. We got a thing for Amazon. If you click on that and buy something, whatever you were going to buy on Amazon, buy through that link, and that helps us out. Also, there's a PayPal if you want to help us out and become an inglorious Mike's Daily Podcaster and get a special greeting from all the cafe characters here at Cafe. Anyway, go there, mikesdailypodcast.com. Help us out that way. You can also listen to the show in a bunch of places. Uh, We're on Podomatic, Mixcloud, Spreaker, Player FM, Ameristream Live, TuneIn, SoundCloud, YouTube, iTunes. Comment on the show. Rate the show there in iTunes and more people find out about us and we don't languish in obscurity. Yes, I also do a Country Crossroads radio station. Well, that is the name of it. CountryCrossroadsRadio.com The link to that, where to listen to that in TuneIn is there at MikeStillyPodcast.com I'm on that show weekends and then you can hear my voice all the time. I'm like the station voice guy. And we're also on Yelp, Tumblr, Tell all your friends about us through all those places. Instagram now has surpassed Twitter. So we were on Instagram like beginning a year ago. Uh, You can see all the Instagram pictures I posted. All there. Mike'sDailyPodcast.com. Now the finale of my Into an Interview with Danger Maker and Adam Burnett. Into an Interview. I'm speaking with Adam Burnett of Danger Maker. We did speak a year ago, and you can hear that interview on the mikesdailypodcast.com website, click on the interviews for 2014. I forget what picture I used for that. I, I'll have to get a current one for the podcast. I have no clue. Do you have a, a new one of, of you guys all wearing Teletubby outfits or something? Exactly, yeah. You <laughs> must have seen it. Yeah. I'll send it to you. And I must be referencing a 90s video. That was right. The, uh, the what they called. Uh, Kids don't watch Teletubbies anymore? No, I think Stone Temple Pilots used Teletubbies in a music video in the 90s, didn't they? Did they really? Wow. But I... I, That's that's a weird combo. Yeah, surreal. But you guys guys make some cool videos. That was the one with the merry-go-round, right? Something like that? Uh, Yeah, that was about a year or two ago, yeah. Yeah. And, and then we had one with um, kind of like the sci-fi kind of thing. Oh, yeah. In the chair. That was last year, yeah. Any new videos? Yeah, actually, we should have one for Never Go Back, uh, I'm told, today. So Ooh. I, will, I will let you know very soon. That was the first song we played in our Into an Interview segment. Yes. Great song. Okay, good. And, and you're starring in it. You're, you you uh, have done a lot of music videos now. What's the secret? The secret is finding a good director. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. Um, I mean, I, you know, we could have great ideas and, and everything. And if you don't have a director who can make it come to life, it's... It, it, it's just not it's not going to work and we, we we made that mistake a couple times so we're trying to avoid that How now. You- and uh, actually the new video that we're about to release was done by David Dutton oh. I don't know if you've heard him but he's if you look him up um, Dutton Films he's done some great stuff around the Bay Area ooh okay I'll have to check yeah. it out how were you led to him um you know just just kind of was looking for someone good and and 
had a few names that were sticking out, and, and he was certainly one of them. And uh, I, I realized we had a mutual friend or two, and yeah, and just ended up being introduced to him, and that was it. Very nice guy. Very cool. Anything you remember from the video, making the video to never go back? Well, we're not really in it at all. Oh. Um, it's all story-driven. It's, it's almost like a little mini short film type Ooh. thing. So there's actual actors, and, you know, it, it'll be a different thing for us. Um, I like those. So, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe a little interesting, more interesting. Is there a part in there where you realize, like, the lead character is actually a ghost? A ghost? <laughs> uh... No, but there is like a flashback type of scene, maybe. So, okay. Yeah, but no, I don't think he's a ghost. I don't think so. Is there a really, really pretty woman in it? There is, I think. Oh, I'm on a so yeah. watch this. I like the. <laughs> I like those in my video. Is there a robot? There's no robot. Oh, no. dang it! No, there is a cool like '90s rave scene though. Oh, awesome. Memories. So, not quite a robot, but <laughs> as close as we might have gotten to robots. Okay, a couple quick questions, because yeah. I know we've covered this before, but your name came from making danger. It's what you like to do. Yes, kind of, sort of. And, and, um, right. I forget yeah, what Yeah, it's what. a reference, uh... So the name itself came out of an episode of The Avengers, which is an old 60s show. With the British guy, Patrick like, McNee. Yeah, Who? exactly. Um, and Carlos, our drummer, is is British. And That's we were brainstorming, like, I think we had a list of maybe 500 names or something. It was, it was ridiculous. And so we started narrowing down, and that one just kind of kept sticking out. Patrick McNee. Who, uh, he, I think he recently passed away, Patrick McNee. But, you know. I think so, yeah. That was a great show. And the woman, too, I think, didn't she? The main woman? I Ooh, can't remember her name. I forget, but she was, yeah, she was a, uh, unbelievably gorgeous back in the yeah. uh, 60s. And then they, you know, I, I always got that show kind of mixed up with The Saint. And Roger Moore and Patrick McNee starred together in the 007 movie, um, View to a Kill. Hmm. With Christopher Walken, where he's trying to blow up a bomb underneath <laughs> Hayward in the in the Hayward Fault, so that Silicon Valley will fall into the ocean. He was in View to a Kill. Yeah, he's he's like got this weird God. wig on. I gotta watch that again. And Grace Jones. Ah, uh. it's a trip, Adam. That's a, that's a combo. It's a, interesting. The whole first part of the movie has nothing to do with the Bay Area. And then, like, the last 45 minutes is all Bay Area. They shoot a couple scenes at that house in Oakland um, that's really popular that I can never get into because the l gates are locked. But supposedly you can take a tour of it. It's over by the zoo, hmm. I think. Uh, huh. Anyways... And so, Danger Maker is from the Avengers, the uh, not the Marvel Comics movie, but the old British TV show. Right. Yeah, it was actually a specific episode that you can look up. Oh. Um, yeah. So it's a little obscure, but check it out. I will do that because. Yeah. I need to watch the Avengers. It's cool. Yeah. It's a good show. And you uh, were playing folk. We were talking about that folk music type thing in the early days. Wh when did you actually first start making music? Um, I mean, since I was a kid, I've played music. Um, but seriously writing and, and recording and, you know, I guess doing it seriously, hmm. probably late 90s. Huh. And was it... In and... and I wasn't releasing anything. I was just doing it, you know. I don't know. And then, uh, and then, kind of put little bands together that kept falling apart. And then finally, Danger Maker seemed to stick a little. That seems so, so difficult to me to make a ba to get a band together. It is. It's not easy. 
But uh, you know, if you if you want to do it badly enough, you can do it. Hmm. So it was was yeah. Craigslist involved? I uh, to a degree, <laughs> a little bit, as it usually is, I guess. How many songs a day do you write, or do you write a lot of songs like a month, or um, is it? It seems like you write a lot. I go. Th- I, I think I go through waves. Um, and it, it kind of partly depends on what's going on in my life and what's happening, and you know. So I'll go through a couple weeks where every day I've just got some idea that comes out that I'm working on, and then I'll go through a couple weeks where nothing much happens, and I kind of step away from it and take a break. You know, I, I don't think it's good to force it. I think it needs to just kind of come naturally a little bit. It seems to me that I I went through the same thing, but now I've had like a long dry period of songwriting. Mm. Although I do do a song at the beginning of beginning of every podcast, so maybe that's draining me. Like a different song? Well, it's always the same music, but it I come up with different lyrics every day. I guess I just to the same song. Yeah. Well, that's I mean that's challenging too. But I guess I need to start making music again and playing. Ra- How- I, th- I, th- I think it's just exposing yourself to as much as you can. And I, I don't mean literally exposing yourself, but Ooh. you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Get, so you- getting out there and hearing stuff. Because I think that's illegal. You know, to, it might be, yeah. To go outside naked. I don't uh, know. I think it's legal now, actually. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, you're in San Francisco. Nevertheless, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm in San Francisco. Nevertheless, um, not what I meant. <laughs> uh, um, yeah. Are you writing the songs on your guitar? Are you playing with like? Are you making uh, chords or something on the guitar or the keyboard? What what is or is it just sort of a mixture of everything? It's a mixture. It depends. It depends what I think lends itself to it. Um, you know, I experiment sometimes with writing purely on an iPad or something, just mm-hmm. using synthesizers. Um, so no, it's not it's not just one thing. And actually, I, I like that because it kind of opens you up to different ideas that you might not think to do on a guitar. You know, if that's your primary instrument or something like that. That totally makes sense. Yeah, it, it, it's like you keep the brain stimulated with all kinds of new experiences. I, I think you have to. It keeps the creativity flowing. Fantastic! All right, then I have to learn how to play the guitar. All right, do it. I'm gonna write a song on, t- <laughs> on an iPad. That's what I'm gonna do. Well, that's. I mean, you, you don't need to learn anything to do that. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It's pretty, it comes pretty easy. But let's talk about In Vain, and then we'll play the song. So the, uh, the production we've talked about, so amazing. Uh, you're using producer Aaron Helm uh, yes. of Oakland. I love the harmonies in the song, and the drum beat pattern. It's, it's full of fills, and, and then you got these deep synthesizers. It's cool. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, and this was one... Um, this is a good example of a song that that kind of lent itself better to their instruments. So, you know, I didn't want to jump in there with a ton of guitar and just kind of change it because it was it was good as it is, I think. And, and what was the inspiration? What was the uh, for in vain? The, what inspired that phrase in vain? Um, you know, I, I think it's kind of. I think it's similar to disappear in, in, in the subject matter. It's, it's kind of inspired by the Bay Area a little bit. Um, yeah, so so just just a reaction to what's going on around here. And thank you, San Francisco, for all the inspiration you have given Adam. <laughs> I agree. And then Carlos is doing some great drumming on this. This is Carlos. Yeah, yeah. Carlos, Carlos came up with with that kind of beat, and it's great. Yeah, it kind of makes the song. How did you two meet? Carlos and I. Yeah. Through through some ads and postings, and you know, we were both looking for 
for, for bands and projects to get started with. Just kind of same time. Does he miss England? I, I think sometimes he does. Does he ever... He's always, he's always bringing in, um, like, uh, candy and cookies that you can only get in England, you know? Oh! Like, things I've never heard of before. Does he... So. Does he take you to British pubs in the city? Uh, we've been to a couple, yeah. I was... watched a few, uh, uh, you know, soccer games. Cool. And then... Yeah. Th- I, that's neat it, And you know um, I was just at a brewery In uh, Redwood City Not in San Francisco But mm-hmm. But they do the, the Like the British style Pint Pumping Tap uh, Instead of you know Where you open the tap And the beer pours oh, You yeah. have to pump it It's kind of cool And it's really flat Yeah But it got me drunk Yeah Yeah <laughs> It'll do that Yeah it's not my favorite, but it's different. Man, Adam, I bet you could write a book about all the things to see in San Francisco, and you'd just be the best tour guide. You and Carlos. We should do that. Ugh! I want to go so to. bad. I walk all over the place, so I could do, like, those walking tours, you know? Where you'd put, like, a little amp on your back, a little speaker system, and you'd talk into a microphone. I can do that. I, I wasn't planning on it, but, you know, sure. <laughs> when I used to yeah. li- live in Ventura County uh, and I was on the radio down there, I used to do kind of a, where I'd interview people, musicians, mostly because it was a country station. I'd interview up and coming country bands like I interviewed Blake Shelton way back and the Dixie Chicks. Hmm. But uh, one time, and Keith Urban. But one time, I interviewed a ghost hunter, a ghost guy, oh, no. and and uh, had him on. And people called up and asked him questions about, "Oh, where's the cool ghost to see in Ventura?" Because apparently, you know, Ventura, like every other city in the world, is haunted. But he <laughs> he would, uh, he used to do ghost tours like that with the speaker on his back, and I would walk past him because I lived downtown. Ventura. 